Street right across from Lord and Taylor over here on Fifth Avenue. Look at all these millennials up here. <laughs> American flag. I'm gonna go into this event. There it is, 415 Fifth Avenue. Going on for a couple days. It's Paul Slack, it's good news planet. Who's those millennials? <laughs> Simon. Paul Sarkis, how you doing? Very good, thank you, Paul. What's your last name, Simon? Berger. Berger. Yeah. Where are you from, Simon? I live in Portugal, and oh. I'm from London originally. All right, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, sounds like good places. The new uh, Secretary Beautiful General places. is uh, from Portugal, so yeah, we good. have lots of the United Nations. So uh, you're a worldly guy, and now you're here in New York, New York, uh, for a millennial uh, conference. Tell us about it. Well, it's the first time we've been to New York. It's in, uh, in the Big Apple. We brought M2020 to uh, probably the, the, the funnest city on earth, if that's a word. We've been to London. Uh, we've been into Singapore. And we're now uh, right in the middle of Fifth Avenue in New York. M2020 is a... I don't know, it's more than an event, really. It's an exhibition, it's a conference, it's a meeting place, it's a forum. We do fantastic food, we do interactive showcases, we have lots of networking. I suppose the whole concept for us is that you come away with something. You come away with a learn, a teach, um, you've felt something, you've shared something, you've bought something, you've sold something, whatever it might be. So uh, it's, a, it's a real cacophony of different, um, you know, different things as an event. What's, what is a millennial? <laughs> what is a millennial? It's the age-old question. Um, a millennial really it's, is... It is age-old, yeah, I think. It is. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's a demographic, but our show's nothing to do with uh, any demographic. It's really more of a mindset and an attitude, and the millennial mindset and attitude is what every big brand and every big retailer, all the way down to the, the smallest companies in the world, uh, those are the consumers that they're trying to identify, retain, attract. Uh, and engage with and uh, it's it's a brand new way of doing business we say it's not a revolution but it's an evolution and it's an you know the business has evolved to such a great extent that um, you know this show is uh, is, a, is a must attend really for anyone so so it's, it's in your mind just because the little clarity for those it's not like advertising or marketing to the say 30 year olds are the 28 to 30 you know because uh, the demographics are actually quite important and run the ad agency which is uh, Madison Avenue across the street sure. so uh, you don't see it in that same manner no I don't I think you could change the word millennial for today's consumer and tomorrow's consumer I think the fact that millennials are the first tech natives as a demographic ever but all future demographics are going to be tech natives so I think there'll be a lot more similarity I think that the, the if you like the level of involvement or you know has to change right now will, will never ever be the same again aha uh -huh, okay so uh, even my, my little grandkids are, uh, are tech natives I love that word yeah I got a whole it's a horrible story I was told the other the last bastion of, of not having a screen or not being technical was for me was to read a, a bedtime story to your children and some 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 guys come up with an idea of doing that via a screen i just thought to myself really that's taking it too far so please goodness if that ever comes on the market don't buy it you know you know <laughs> a book and and a, and a makeup story will always be better than a screen story at bedtime all right, I, I'm with you too. I've made thousands of TV shows, you know, and I hardly watch much TV. Uh, it's a passive medium, yeah. And uh, a screen, a television show. Absolutely I mean, you got to like right. climb in the. There's no yeah. way yeah. you can. Uh, that's why a lot of times they shoot close-ups just to make you feel a little bit closer to the uh, absolutely uh, the the couch potato. Absolutely. So you can't I, you've got 3D. a good thinking here. I yeah. like this. You cannot beat 3D. Whatever you look on a screen, even if it's a 3D screen, it's still 2D. You know, the human experience is 3D. You can, you know, it's just, you know, for me, the, the, you know, tech plays a great role, but it's certainly not everything. All right, so in essence, us shaking hands like a human beings, uh, uh, it still works for you? Absolutely. You feel the vibes? It's the only way. I suppose the, the one other thing I'd say about M2020 and why I love it is that Unlike other shows in this space, which you know talk, you know, bring startups, you know, into a, a room and then bring a whole load of VCs into the room to look at them and potentially invest with them. What we do at Millennial 2020 is, is, is we do have that as obviously as part of our ecosystem. But the main point of difference for us is that we introduce those innovators and disruptors, the entrepreneurs who are coming up with those new vendor solutions, directly into the big brands and retailers in the world. We, in other words, we introduce them to a paying customer, which hopefully 
business doesn't change you need to make profits it's not about revenue or funding it's about profit so you need to be making in being introduced uh, to paying customers and by the way if you, that's the way you go you can keep a hundred percent of your equity you don't have to dilute um, like you would to VCs so I mean there is there's a whole you know whole charge of new companies coming in to invest in new startups but my advice to any startup is find a customer um, as much as you can and keep all the all the equity to yourself because you deserve it i love this thinking uh last uh, two quick questions sure. uh we are good news broadcast and we like to feature good news or ask people what is good news for you personal or business um good news for me is family i love family um I'm happiest out on, on, on the sea fishing. I'm a big blue water fisherman. Um, good news for me uh, is uh, people getting on, um, people helping others. And I, I think really mentorship, and I, I love this word mentorship because actually the mentor now gains as much from the mentee. But I, and I've always said to anyone who's starting a business, find someone good who can be your sounding board, your mentor, whatever you call them. But believe me, I've been a mentor to many people, but I've learned just as much than they will ever would of me. So they're that, and never more so than now, the reciprocity between parent, child, teacher, student, mentor, mentee, big brand startup is immense. Brilliant thinking. Thank you. I use an English term. Brilliant. All right, the last <laughs> question. We're very involved with the International Day of Peace, World Peace Day. It's September 21st. 193 countries raised their hands. I've asked thousands of people, and we do stuff here in Times Square, Central Park, blah, blah, and the rest around the world. And so I've asked thousands of people, what does peace mean to them? And uh, I'd like to ask that of you, Simon. Sure. Uh, peace for me is all about uh, acceptance and tolerance. Um, in all colours, creeds, race, opinions, um, you know, we're all humans uh, and at the end of the day, peace means for me, until we believe that, genuinely all of us, there'll never be peace. But sadly, I think we're a long way off from that and um, maybe also to change the haves and the have-nots, change that uh, ratio, um, that might help um, along the way. But uh, yeah, everyone should be tolerant, accepting and loving each other. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Simon. Pleasure. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.